Well, what an appropriate song to start the night off. Here to show the world Dolph Ziggler's theme here for our opening contest of the 150 episode number seven. We've got more first and second round action coming up tonight. We're going to fill in four more spots in the round of 32. Uh, so far, 20, or I'm sorry, we're not anywhere close to that. So far, 16 spots have been filled. We're going to fill four more tonight. We're going to have eight first round matches, followed by four second round matches featuring the winners of those first eight. We kick things off here with one of our qualifiers. She beat Ivalice in the qualifying round to earn this shot. This is Smiley Kylie Ray from Chicago. A uh, disciple of the legendary Hall of Famer Booker T. Making her way out to the ring. She was also part of our inaugural tournament, the 500. She beat Kaito Kitomiya in the first round and then lost to Kushida in round two. Making her way to the ring from Chicago, Illinois. Carrie. So if you're just joining us for the very first time here at Pro Wrestling Simulated, we like tournaments, we like video games, and we like wrestling. So we found a way to combine all of them. Our first season, we took the 2020 Pro Wrestling Illustrated PWI 500 list of the 500 best wrestlers in the world, and we turned it into a giant single elimination tournament that took us over a year to finish. Uh, we decided to go a little smaller scale for season two here, but we are running two concurrent tournaments there's this one the 150 which you're going to see tonight we've also got a tag team tournament called the 100 uh that will be running pretty much the schedule has been for the last couple of weeks we'll do the 100 on sundays we'll do the 150 on tuesdays uh there will be some weeks where there's you know changes just check our uh check our social media for the updated schedules so kylie's got a stiff climb ahead of her as you can see her hey. opponent tonight from Richmond, Virginia, the Impact World Women's Champion, Mickey James. Mickey James, the 24 year veteran, making her way down to the ring. She debuted when Kylie was just six years old. So, Mickey, a mainstay of PWI's women's list, which is how we determined the seating for the 150. She's number 15 this year. Uh, she got as high as number one back in 2009. Uh, she actually hit her lowest point last, or actually she has not appeared on the list in 2020 or 2021. Uh, so this 15 was a return to form after having been number 73 in 2019. Now, of course, Mickey James, one of the all-time greats in women's wrestling, really at the forefront of the women's revolution before it was even called that. Uh, her series of matches with Trish Stratus in WWE, and then what she was able to help build in Impact Wrestling, a big part of what wound up eventually inspiring the larger promotions to put more of their focus on women's wrestling as well. Uh, and of course, women like Kylie Ray have have reaped the benefits of that. Uh, you know, uh, independent wrestling for women has grown by leaps and bounds over the last decade or so. Uh, I mean, just think what, you know, what those matches were 20 years ago compared to what they are now. Uh, Mickey went for a big splash, came up a little short, though, and decides to pose as though we didn't notice. Uh, yeah, Mickey, we all saw. Ran down big right hands there on Smiley Kylie, making her a little less smiley than she was before. Pulling her up to her feet and sending her back into the corner. He's going to actually put her all the way up top. She going for a Stratisfaction here. Now she's going to punch her off the top rope. Brutal combination of moves there from Mickey. And just slamming Kylie's face off the canvas twice. A third time? Nope. Instead, she's going to stomp on the elbow. Oh, Mickey's got her serious face on now. She was having fun playing her. Okay. She was having fun playing around with Kylie to begin with, but now she's taking it deadly serious. Going for that split. No, an elbow drop this time. Finds its mark, hooks the leg. One, two, three. A quick win for Mickey James. Just absolutely skishing. Here is your winner, Mickey James. So congrats to Mickey. In terms of the uh, the evaluation from the fans in attendance, you know, they, they like the longer matches, but you know what? 
it happens that way sometimes. Kylie Ray, the number 143 seed, qualifying round. There's only so much you can do when you're in fighting legend like Mickey James. That's to Mickey. She's moving on to compete again later tonight uh, against the winner between Van and Casey Spinelli. That's a match that's coming up later on tonight. So from one champion to another, uh, and another pretty huge underdog here, although probably more known to uh, mainstream wrestling fans than Kylie was. Although Kylie did have a brief uh, stint in both AEW and NXT. But she's definitely not had the exposure that Ty Mello has. But the Brazilian beauty definitely has her hands full here as she takes on the EST of PWS. Doesn't rhyme. Bianca Belair, the winner. This one is going to face either Tootie Lynn or Rosemary later on this evening. So, so far throughout this tournament, the higher seeds have not fared well. We've mentioned this multiple times throughout the course of the tournament that the um, the favorites, uh, like for example, we've already had the number five, Jade Cargill lose. Number 13, Britt Baker lost. Number 16, AZM lost. Number 17, Liv Morgan. Number four, Becky Lynch. A ton very heavily. Uh, so I, I think that's part of why Mickey wanted to make short work of Kylie Ray in the opener. One fall. And so what is presenting all wrestling? Uh, AEW unfortunately has gone nine and thirteen in this tournament so far. They started the tournament with twenty. We're not even out of the second round yet, and we're down to seven. Uh, they have just really struggled throughout the course of this tournament. She did qualify for this match by beating Max the Impaler back in the qualifying round, but there's uh, as great as Max is. Ty definitely has her hands full with her opponent in this match. The number two overall seed in our tournament. Bianca Belair, WWE, has 14 wrestlers remaining in the tournament, uh, which is the most among all promotions. They've gone 17 and 11 thus far, uh, significantly better than AEW has, has done so far. And, of course, she is the <coughs> – oh, excuse me. She's the number two seed. She is the highest seed remaining. When I was going through the earlier eliminations, I knew actually to mention that number one overall, Shuri, also eliminated – so Bianca, technically the odds-on favorite right now. Uh, if the rest of the bracket were to go chalk, uh, it would come down to Bianca and Charlotte Flair uh, is the highest seed remaining on the other side of the bracket. Crowd chanting EST for Bianca here. We'll see. Uh, time out. I'm hoping to pull what the biggest upset of the tournament thus far, uh, surpassing last week's victory for Becca over Jade Cargill. Uh, uh, rib breaker there by Bianca. Uh, referee slow to get there, but there was no way that was going to be enough to put Ty Mello away. Brutal variation on the Dominator there for an inverted body slam by Bianca. Oh, she's already getting her up. Is she going for the KOD already? Nope, just a torture rack. That's a brutal submission hold in and of itself. Doesn't doesn't need anything extra to do it. Did she? No, she's elbowing her way out of it. I thought the referee was calling it off, but uh, Ty, I guess, told him she did not submit. Hard to tell over the the roar of this simulated crowd here. 
It's Knoxville's own Bianca Belair sends Ty Mello tumbling out to the floor, and she follows right behind. That uh, fan right there in the front corner, standing and doing the Daniel Bryan yes chant for some reason. But Bianca now pump handle into a gut buster. Nicely done there by the EST. Ty with that dragon screw leg whip takes her down. Kick to the head from Bianca. And then Ty just punches her in the face. I knew this one was going to get a little bit chippy. And uh, so far, these ladies have not disappointed in that regard. Uh, this is WWE against AEW. There's a ton of promotional pride on the line. Boot to the midsection and a punch from Bianca. Bianca really pulling out all the stops here from a striking standpoint, which can be her game, but it isn't typically. She usually relies more on her power than she does uh, than she does striking. She's just going to let Ty get counted out. She's going to have to wait a while because here at PWS, we use the traditional Japanese 20 count on the floor as opposed to the typical American 10. Uh, that stems back to uh, us using Fire Pro Wrestling World for the 500, uh, which does uh, has a 20 count on the floor. So we decided to keep that consistent between our tournaments. Only up to a three so far, so... Both Ty and Bianca have a ton of time. Oh, a brutal backbreaker there by Ty Mello. Now she's wrapping her. Ah, oh, trying to break that shoulder. Not much Bianca can do in terms of hitting her, her trademark moves like KOD. She's only got one functioning arm. Ty came in with a game plan. We've seen a vicious side of Ty Mello ever since uh, she paired up with Sammy Guevara and joined the Jericho Appreciation Society in AEW. There's a, a mean streak that we never saw from the from the judoka in her her earlier days in AEW as well as in NXT. I always thought she had a ton of potential in NXT, but they just never really had they never really had a spot for her. with there. She was trying to get air pad there, but also had baby. So much depth on that roster. They're going to buy it now. So, so much depth on roster time that, you know, Ty, who was still relatively green at that point, uh, was just never, she was never going to get that kind of airtime. Two. Two. Nice lag there. I hope that clears up here shortly. Uh, the two. Two of them have a combined 11 years. So these these two ladies have probably at least a decade ahead of them each. And Bianca is probably already a first ballot Hall of Famer. But the longer her career goes on, the more and more she builds her legend. Being the legend earlier, Bianca could theoretically go down as the best of all time. Ty going to the middle turnbuckle, signaling for Bianca to get to her feet. Oh, nice Lucha arm drag off the middle turnbuckle. And now strikes from Ty. This is more her game than it is Bianca's. Snap side suplex there. Dragging her away. Oh, just going for the pin. One, two, three, and Ty Mello. Pulls off the biggest upset of the tournament so far. And another top seed falls. Was that two and a half or three? Two and a half. Good match. So Ty Mello now moves on to a second round with either Tootie Lynn or Rosemary. And those two ladies, will, that match will actually be the last match before our intermission. We'll take a little intermission after the eighth match before we go into our final four. So we're taking a chance on this next match. Um, I have watched 
I have watched some streams that have gotten DMCA'd for one of the entrance themes we're going to hear. I think this stream is still small enough where probably nobody's going to notice. But, you know, in case you're watching this replay and your audio drops out for a second, it's because this next match has Ronda Rousey in it. And apparently uh, the people that own the rights to uh, J- uh, Joan Jett's bad reputation are litigious. But you know what? In the interest of fairness, as Vince McMahon would say, but really in the interest of, uh, you know, presenting these streams in the their, their purest sense, we're going to play the entrances as expected. Man, I can't believe Bianca Belair, the number two seed, the number one and number two seeds are already out of this tournament and we are not out of the second round yet. Bianca didn't even make it out of the first round. Shuri at least won one match before she got eliminated. Here the following comes. contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Making her way to the ring from London, England. The European Underground Prestigious Champion, Alex S. So Alexis Falcon, you can see she's wearing the Wrestling Resurgence Art House Championship to the ring. She's also currently the Alpha Omega Wrestling Women's Champion and the TNT Extreme Wrestling Women's Champion. Uh, Heard of it. A legend on the English uh, independent scene over the last half decade or so. Uh, We saw her qualify for this by beating Alexia Nicole back in the qualifying round. But you know who doesn't give a damn about her reputation? Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And from Venice Beach, California, the baddest woman on the planet, Ronda Rousey! I love this song. I always loved this song, but I got a new appreciation for it when I binged Freaks and Geeks a few years ago, which was just the perfect theme song for that show. We've got a Ronda Rousey chant here. The baddest woman on the planet in there with the Iron Queen, and Ronda just picks her up and slams her down, showing off that MMA background. Stomping on the shoulder. Ronda getting the crowd riled up here early. Right into the cross arm breaker. This one may be over quick. Part of it is Ronda is the 18th seed. She doesn't want to fall like the other high seeds have so far. Uh, Like I said, she's number 18, number one, number two, number four, number five, number nine. Number 13, 16, and 17 are all gone already. At number 18, she is the 11th highest seed. I'm sorry, the 10th highest seed remaining. So there have been a ton of upsets throughout this tournament. Oh, split leg drop there by Alexis Falcon. Channeling her inner Naomi. Now heading up to the top rope. Swanton bomb across the torso of Ronda Rousey. And another split leg drop. And then just a stomp for good measure. Trapping her in a... Going for the surfboard. Yes, she's got her in a surfboard lock here. Actually, I guess that's a bow and arrow, isn't it? If it's turned that way, it's a bow and arrow stretch. Oh, Rana slips out of it into a pin, but Alexis kicks out immediately. A little bit of background on me in case y'all are curious and it's your first time watching. I am yours truly, Pat Dooley. You see me here. Hi, that's me. Um, yeah, I'm the one that's uh, that's running these streams, uh, as well as keeping track of all the stats. And I'm just I'm just kind of doing it all here. Uh, I do occasionally have co-hosts come on with me, um, but this this episode I am flying solo. Uh, I'm a huge, you know, I mentioned at the top, I'm a huge mark for tournaments. I love pro wrestling. I'm in fact going to classes to 
get into pro wrestling. Uh, I am currently the creative lead at FXE Wrestling in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Uh, we're about to put on our first show in about a month. Uh, no official date has been announced, but uh, I am being told it's going to be sometime late March or early April. So uh, more on that as it develops. I've uh, been a lifelong fan. I just turned 40 last year, so that's a lot of life to have been a fan long. Um, but yeah, I've been watching since the, the early 90s. And then just as a massive fan, I've gone back and studied everything. Uh, I, I just, I love, love, love this business. Uh, and I, I found that this is kind of the most efficient way for me to practice my play-by-play -play skills, uh, which I will also be using on the, uh, the FXE shows. Uh, don't worry, I didn't book myself as the creative lead to be the play-by-play -play announcer. I was brought in to be the play-by-play -play announcer first uh, and then worked my way up to creative lead as well. Uh, so <laughs> um, it's uh, it's been a great experience. I've met some great people. FXE, of course, run by AJ Gallant, uh, who, uh, was, who studied under Shawn Michaels. He studied at the WCW Power Plant, uh, worked with Eddie Guerrero and Mr. Perfect. Uh, other trainers at the school, Tom Latimer, uh, the current NWA World Television Champion, his wife Camille, the current one-time NWA World Women's yeah. Champion, uh, Magic Jake Dumas from the NWA, Jeremiah Plunkett, uh, and of course, two-time World Champion Jerry Lynn. Uh, so FXE has is you know, if I was going to learn how to be a wrestling announcer, or how to be a you know, how to work in the creative side of wrestling, I don't know how I could have have just found a better place. Um, it's, it's been a great experience. I've gotten to work with some, some excellent wrestlers that I'm very excited to, to bring to you. Some of them have some experience. Um, most of them don't. So it's going to be a very, very fresh roster, uh, when FXE Crush Live comes to you soon. Currently though, Ronda Rousey struggling a little bit on the floor. We got up to a 13 count before returning to the ring after Alexis Falcon sent her into the announce table. Now she's got her up for a suplex. No, Gourd Buster by Alexis Falcon. That is slamming the back of Ronda's head off the canvas. Clearly Alexis doesn't give a damn about Ronda's reputation. Now with the neck scissor and then just driving an elbow into the side of her face. Waiting for her to get to her feet. Oh, rolling DDT. It's sort of a modified Sister Abigail too. Ronda kicks out very close there. We got a women's wrestling champ now from the audience. Oh, Ronda with a big forearm. Oh, single arm DDT. Letting Alexis get up to her feet. The hip toss into the arm bar. That's going to be it. That's got to be it. There's no way. Ale oh, Alexis manages to get a foot under the ropes. Referee calls for a break. Ronda goes for the pin. One, two. And Alexis Falcon kicks out. Ronda cannot believe it. Dragging her away from the ropes. Not sure what she's going for now. Pulls her to her feet. Oh, big judo throw takeover. By Falcon, but Ronda just leg whips her down that dragon screw leg whip. Not pulling Falcon to her feet. She's got her up in a firewoman's carry. Oh, but Alexis gets out of it into a diving reverse DDT. Alexis Falcon giving the baddest woman on the planet everything she can handle. Now the firewoman's carry of her own. Backpack stunner. That's the move she used to pin Alexia Nicole in round one. One, two. Oh, Ronda barely kicks out. And I say round one. I'm at the qualifying round. This is round one. But still, in her first match, Alexis Falcon used that same backpack stunner to win. And again, that Sister Abigail DDT variation. Two, three. And Alexis Falcon pulls off the massive upset. The number 111 seed beating number 18. Good night for the qualifiers so far as both Ty Mello and now Alexis Falcon run. I 
it got does that get four stars? Four stars. Nicely done. Alexis and Rhonda. And now Alexis Falcon will face the winner between Naomi and Miyu Watanabe later on in this episode. So far, three matches, two upsets here on episode seven of the 150. Ty Mello, Alexis Falcon, and Mickey James moving on. Kylie Ray, Bianca Belair, and Ronda Rousey all leaving. So we're about to have, uh, so, so far, WWE, after a, a, a good start to the tournament, 0 and 2, and they are, uh, they're hoping to uh, break that that schneid here. Uh, maybe it'll work out in their advantage because uh, their next wrestler is the underdog. And underdogs, as we mentioned, have done very well so far tonight and throughout the tournament. We're going to see Blair Davenport, the former B Priestley, as she takes on another representative of Impact Wrestling, Giselle Shaw. Now, Impact has actually gone, I believe, 3-0? and uh, Yeah, they were 2-0 and coming in, and then Mickey won. So 3-0 and for Impact Wrestling. Uh, meanwhile, WWE started the tournament with 25 wrestlers, and they are already down to 12. They've gone 17 and 13, including 0-2 tonight. So uh, hopefully Blair Davenport can end that streak, but also Giselle Shaw hoping to continue the streak for Impact. Impact has done incredibly well. But let's head down to ringside. The following contest is scheduled for one one fall. Making her way to the ring from England, Blaze Dangerous. Blaze Dangerous. I like that. The top guy, Gene Blair Davenport, a.k.a. B. Priestley, uh, was a huge star in World Wonder Ring stardom before coming over to the States. Uh, worked a couple of early AEW shows before signing with WWE. She was a a staple of the NXT UK brand before that was uh, basically swallowed whole by NXT during the uh, the layoffs last year. Uh, and she's been a standout in NXT as well. She's one of the, I, I would say she's one of the best, you know, pound for pound technical, like just bell to bell wrestlers in women's wrestling right now. Um, she may not be pushed to the top of the card in, in NXT like I would like to see, but she is tremendous once that bell sounds not uh she's the, currently the number 98 seed in our tournament so a huge underdog here against number 31 giselle shaw but as we've seen throughout the course of this night upsets happen Oh, no intro name. Okay. Uh, that is the quintessential diva, Giselle Shaw, an eight-year pro from Toledo City in the Philippines. Uh, she's been a mainstay of the PWI list for the last five years. Uh, the uh, In 2021, she got all the way up to number 19 before sliding down to number 31 on the 2022 list. Now here she is facing some stiff competition. Both women five feet seven inches tall. Blair has about eleven pounds on Shaw. Blair trained, but trained by kind of a who's who of uh, of British wrestling trainers back in her day: Travis Banks, Jacob Cross, Tycade, Bruno Becker, uh, Taylor Adams, Misty, Charlie Roberts, Shane Sinclair, Giselle Shaw. One trainer, Lance Storm. Kick to the midsection there from Blair Davenport. And she is in control here early with that knee lift. And now just dropping right down into those mounted punches. Hooks the leg. One. Wow. That would have uh, that would have been impressive if, if Blair could have got the pin that early. But you know what? We Oh, now just stomping on the chest of Giselle Shaw. And then a kick to the face. Those are back over. I'm going for a 
Oh, it's a figure four. She just got into it in an unorthodox way. Nicely done by Blair Davenport. Was working on the knees and the ankles of Giselle Shaw. If she gets her in that move again, I'll talk a little bit more about why that move hurts. Dragon suplex. I'm sorry, no, that's a tiger suplex there. Butterfly suplex? Yeah, it's a butterfly. One, two. Oh, wow. Blair almost won it very quickly there. Uh, so we were talking about titles earlier. Giselle Shaw is currently the Fierce Females Champion, as well as the Kem Valley Wrestling Women's Champion. Backbreaker, nicely done. Giselle in firm control here. And the Mr. Perfect Snapmare. Now heading up to the top rope. What's she going for here? A big diving elbow, but Blair Davenport nowhere to be found. A running knee right to the face. Hooks the leg. One, two. Oh, that almost did it. We almost had another upset. Four matches, three upsets. So far, Mickey James winning our opener has been the only odds-on favorite to win. C4, that standing solo Spanish fly by Giselle Shaw, and then a big kick. One, two, and Blair Davenport kicks out of the chick kick. That is one of Giselle Shaw's finishers. Blair Davenport just kicked out of it. Shaw went for another kick, but Davenport caught the leg. Took her over with a dragon screw. Went for those mounted punches, but Giselle rolled through into punches of her own. Kick blocked into another dragon screw. And now she's working the arm. I don't know what uh, Blair was doing. Oh, just chops to the chest. A big right hand. Davenport now, what's she doing? Oh, it just with the, the Rob Van Dam uh, split leg drop. Uh, raining down punches. Oh, but Giselle kicks her in the face to get out of it. Fujiwara armbar. Working on the shoulder. Blair can see the rope. You can see in her face. She can see the rope, but she is not quite close enough to reach it to break the hold. Giselle Shaw just lets her up, though. I'm a little surprised. I think if she had held on to that, she might have gotten the submission. Oh, big overhand chop. And a release German suplex. This has been a hard-hitting affair. We, we knew it would be, but... Uh, it has, it has definitely exceeded those expectations, even. And Shaw hooks the leg. One, two. No! Oh, Blair kicks out. Shaw took too much time capitalizing on that German suplex. Took too long to get into the pin. There's that rolling snapmare again. And the head and neck of Blair Davenport have just been have just been decimated throughout this match. Clearly, Blair setting up for one of her trademark kicks. Either the chick kick or eat defeat. By God, stunner. Davenport rolls her over, hooks the leg. One, two. Oh, and Giselle Shaw kicks out of the stunner. Not sure what she's going for here. She's going back up to the top rope. Oh, but Shaw rolls away. Smart strategy by Giselle Shaw. She catches up to her and Rocket launches her into the middle of the ring. She's going for that C4 again, but Blair fights her way out of it. Go behind. Big German suplex, but they wind up in the ropes. Now, nice go behind. I don't know what she was going for there, but Shaw steps on her foot. And a backbreaker by Giselle Shaw. Oh, that just stomps on her face. Cross face. I guess it's more like a LaBelle lock. And Blair taps out. And WWE falls to 0 and 3 on this episode. While Impact is 4 and 0 since this tournament began. 
Jupiter. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot again that there's no uh, <laughs> announced name. Uh, is Jupiter straight victory for Impact Wrestling in this tournament and three straight losses for WWE on this night? incredible turn of events through the first four matches of this show and uh what do you say let's uh let's find out who giselle's second round opponent is going to be our next match is going to determine that we do know we will see mickey james giselle shaw alexis falcon and ty Mello in action later tonight in second round matches after having won their first round and we've got four more first round matches to go to determine who their opponents will be in those matches first stand by while i again tell it what arena i want this show to happen at and all right now it is gonna be laney luck the number 95 seed against one of my edits so i do apologize in advance uh arisa nakajima uh the number 34 seed now Almost all of the women in this tournament that aren't in-game models uh, I found on uh, 2K's Community Creations. There's some excellent editors out there that have made some great creations. Unfortunately, the only Arisa Nakajima that exists on Community Creations for PS5 is... Uh, there's a, a part of it is corrupted, so it's not able to be downloaded. So I had to create my own. And as we've established throughout this show, going back to season one, I have never been good at creator wrestler. Um, I've always loved it, but I've always been a, you know, get somebody else's formula from Game Facts back in the days when you could do that, uh, or now the, uh, the route of just download somebody else's. <laughs> But here comes Laney Luck, the party unicorn, making her way to the ring now. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Making her way to the ring from the United States of America. Kansas City. Lane E. Luke. Man, Laney Luck making her way to the ring. She is from Kansas City, Kansas, not Missouri. Uh, she is the current Zelo Pro Wrestling Women's Champion. The title she's held for a year and about two weeks now at this point. Uh, she This is her third appearance on PWI's top females list. Uh, she's also been in the PWI 500 three times, uh, including 2021, uh, which put her in the, P in the 500, our inaugural tournament, uh, where she unfortunately lost to Trevor Aon in round one. Now, again... I am bad at creating wrestlers. So forgive me, Arisa Nakajima, for how bad your likeness is. Also, I'm not positive I did an entrance for her. I think I may have just made the character model. Oops. Um... I did do her move set. I just don't think I did the entrance. I think this is all the default entrance stuff. So I am sorry, Arisa. Um, as I mentioned, I am not good at this. I'm good at this. Um, at least so people tell me. Um, I'm pretty good at commentary. But uh, creating wrestlers in video games has never been a strong suit of mine. But again, here's Arisa Nakajima, the last remaining wrestler representing Seedling, a Joshi promotion out of Japan. They started the tournament with three and have gone 0-2 thus far. But this is the Seedling Beyond the Sea champion, a title that she's held for two months today. Uh, she's trained by Sachi Abe. She's from Chichibu, Saitama, Japan. She's preparing to go one-on-one -on -one here with Kansas City's Laney Luck party unicorn and there's the bell oh, nakajima's going for a big overhand right and instead laney hits her with the wow okay 
Starts off with a code breaker, then into a, an eagle head scissor. And elbow drop, or uh, sorry, a knee drop to the inside of the elbow of Nakajima. And then just a running kick to the spine. Up to the top rope she goes. What's she going for? Moonsault press, but Nakajima gets her knees up. Nakajima going for a Northern Light suplex. And a knee to the face. Brutal combination there from Arisa Nakajima. And she has immediately turned this thing around. Luck got off to a hot start. Since Nakajima got those knees up on the moonsault attempt, it has been all Nakajima. Fisherman Buster. Oh, and a big back kick there by Laney Luck. Getting a little momentum back into a released German suplex. She's got the leg. Didi tees the ankle into the mat, hooks the leg. One, two. Oh, but Nakajima is able to kick out. Crowd thought that was too sweet. Kick to the spine there from Laney. Quebrada. But Nakajima is able to slightly roll out of the way and she comes up empty. Laney doing the hurricane pose there for some reason. Oh, series of strikes now from Laney Luck. Nakajima able to block it, now firing off strikes of her own, including that discus forearm. Now go behind, half and half suplex. She calls that the DXD. Actually, it's probably just the DD, right? They don't pronounce the X and things like that. Hooks the leg. One, two, three, and that does it. Back-to-back -back wins by the odds-on favorite here. Trying to get things back on track. Here is your winner, star, Nicole Jim A. Quick win there for Arisa Nakajima, but she knows that Giselle Shaw awaits later on tonight. And a two-star finish there. Kojima uh, will face too many abs open, running too many other things while these matches are going on because I try to keep track of everything in real time. Uh, but yes, Arisa Nakajima and Giselle Shaw will be happening I believe that's probably going to wind up being our main event. Uh, yep, yeah, it does look that way. Um, I will tell you for sure the rundown as we know the remaining matches going forward. So at the arena again. And now WWE again has gone 0 and 3 tonight. And their next representative is not particularly interested in making WWE look that good. It's Naomi, uh, who, despite everything that's happened over the last year or so, is still, oops, still technically under contract to WWE. So she will be representing WWE in this match against Tokyo Joshi Pro's Miyu Watanabe. Now, Tokyo Joshi Pro has done very well throughout this tournament. Eight wins, only two losses. There are six uh, TJPW wrestlers remaining. Uh, meanwhile, again, as I mentioned, Naomi, so far, her WWE has gone 0-3, which means she is now one of only 11 WWE wrestlers remaining. They're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Making her way to the ring from Kobe, Japan, the international women's champion, Mills the Wonder. Miyu Watanabe is currently the Tokyo Joshi Pro International Princess Champion, a title she won back in October. Uh, at only five foot three, she is a surprising powerhouse. Uh, so we will 
see uh, if that comes into play against the more uh, all-round style of her opponent here, Naomi. Who I left as the in-game model because, again, technically speaking, she is under contract to WWE. The winner of this match will face Alexis Falcon later tonight. Naomi coming to the ring five feet five inches tall from Sanford, Florida. Uh, I know Sanford well. I have picked friends up from the Sanford airport back when I used to live in Central Florida. Uh, what a strange time in my life that was. But as a result, I got to watch Naomi back in her Naomi Knight days in Florida Championship Wrestling uh, before FCW became NXT and before she became a member of the Bloodline. Uh, marrying into the Uso family. And there's the bell, and we are underway with our sixth of 12 matches tonight. So far through the first five, we've had three chalk wins, two upsets. And we've also seen WWE struggle to get out of the gates. Oh, and three tonight. Naomi hoping to end that streak against Miyu Watanabe from Tokyo Joshi Pro, a promotion that has done very well in this tournament thus far, though this is their first match of the night. It's Fujiwara armbar there from Watanabe. Shot to the midsection, then a big right hand. Release German suplex by Mew. And then dropping a knee. Oh, and a knee lift. And then uh, sort of a variation on the hammer lock there. Oh, just driving the shoulder and elbow of Naomi into the mat. Naomi is the odds on favorite here at number 47 against Watanabe's 82. Watanabe, only a five-year pro. Naomi's got 13 years pro. Of course, she burst onto the scene in WWE as one of Brodus Clay's Funkadactyls back in the day. Um, of course, then went on to a, a great in-ring career as a competitor. Uh, won the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania last year alongside Sasha Banks. Um, and actually, the team of Naomi and Sasha, who now calls herself Mercedes Monet, as she's no longer in WWE, uh, that team will be part of the 100, uh, as they were listed as one of PWI's top 100 tag teams in the world last year. Uh, so we will see them coming on an upcoming episode of the 100. And actually, uh, I did finally go through and figure out um, the upcoming shows. Uh, more on that later. Um, but let me see if I can find specifically what episode they'll be on. Uh, they will be on episode seven of the hundred, which will be happening on it's currently scheduled for March 21st. So three weeks from tonight, Mercedes Monet and Naomi will take on the team of Hiroshima and Naomi Yoshimura uh, of Disaster Box. So, yeah, so the 100 was originally also going to be a 2K tournament. But because PWI included men's and women's and mixed teams in the tournament, uh, 2K does not allow you to do men versus women in any form. You can do mixed tags where it's a man and a woman against a man and a woman, but only the men can fight the men, only the women can fight the women. Which is not exactly great, but I figured, you know, if it had to come down to that, that's fine. But when you have teams made up entirely of women taking on teams made up entirely of men in the bracket as it's set up, there's just no way to do it in 2K. It wouldn't allow you. So, uh, as you saw Sunday night on the last episode of the 100, 
uh, we switched over to Fire Pro Wrestling World for PS4, which works fine, except tag matches in that game take a very long time. We did a 12-match show, which is pretty typical for us, and it took three and a half hours, uh, whereas typically one of these streams, for example, uh, this is our our sixth of 12 matches, and we're less than an hour in. We will probably be done. It'll probably be about an hour 45 by the time this episode is all said and done. Sunday's episode was twice that. Uh, now, tag matches in video games always take longer, but even in uh, in 2K, through two episodes of doing just 2K, um, excuse, me, <coughs> excuse me, for 12 match shows, we were still averaging about 245. Um, so it's an hour longer than our, our women's match, uh, shows were, but uh, you know a good 40 minutes shorter than Fire Pro was. So going forward in the 100, we're going to do only when we have shows that require men versus women. We are going to have only 10 matches on those shows and 14 on the 2K shows. So the 2K shows are going to get a little longer. Uh, if I did my math right, they're probably closer to like 3.05. Uh, but it's going to bring those fire pros to like 2.50 as a to five. So it's basically taking about minutes off of fire pros runtime and adding about 25 to 2k now that's super nerdy and it probably only matters to me but full transparency me going for the pin here one two naomi able to kick out uh so if you're wondering why uh going forward we're not all in the, the women's tournament is going to say exactly the same it's all going to be in 2k um but if you wonder, uh, you know, in the coming weeks, why some of the tag matches are happening on one show and not on others, and why on some episodes we have fewer second round matches than we have on other shows, that's why. Um, because based nice diving reverse DDT there by Watanabe, um, we will do two uh, rounds when it's possible. So, like, for example... On this Sunday's episode, uh, uh, just like I said, as an example, we're going to have, uh, shoot, here we go. Okay, uh, the Usos, the number one overall seed. Hold on. Pinfall attempt here by Watanabe. And we've got our third upset of the night, and WWE falls to 0 and 4. Eight. WE has lost all four of its matches tonight. They came into the show uh, with 14 wrestlers. They're currently down to 10. That's just a, just a, like I said, a brutal showing the top promoted so far we've had three upsets all of them have been over wwe talent bianca belair ronda rousey and naomi plus blair davenport was the underdog against giselle shaw and lost that match so uh, but we now know it will be Miyu watanabe against alexis falcon uh, coming up later on tonight in a second round match where either the number 82 seed or the number 111 seed will advance to the round of 32. So, tons of upsets here. Of course, that shouldn't surprise anybody who's been watching our, our shows since the beginning, uh, back in, uh, you know, late 2021. <laughs> because we, uh, the very first tournament we ever ran, the 500, was won by a seed in the 300s. Royce Chambers is the current world simu weight champion uh, because he won that tournament he will be defending the title uh at our biggest show ever coming up wrestlemania weekend we are calling it wrestlemania uh where we are going to have uh we are going to have the semifinals and finals of the 100 
the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals of the 150, we will have a number one contender, Royal Rumble, and the winner of the Rumble later that night will face Royce Chambers in the main event for the World Simulate title. So we will crown the first ever World Simulate Tag Champions and the first ever World Simulates Champion, as well as have Royce Chambers' first defense of the World Simulate title. Us, we are in the Philippines now for this match. Uh, bummer for Giselle Shaw that she didn't get to have this match in Manila, you know, in front of her, her home country. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Making her way to the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Casey Spivey. Of Casey Spinelli. 13-year pro from Toronto, another uh, apostle of Lance Storm, also trained by the likes of Scotty Mack, Kenny Lush, N Nelson Creed, Artemis Spencer, and a woman we have seen in this tournament, Nicole Matthews. She was unranked on the 2021 list, but she's back, number 79 on the 2022 list. She's the current Steel City Pro Wrestling Women's Champion and the Acclaim Pro Wrestling Women's Champion. She is taking on one of the fastest rising stars in women's wrestling. And there from the United States of America. She's from LA. The Hell Bent Vixen, Viva Van. Five year pro. She is already the big time wrestling women's champion, the PCW Ultra Women's Champion, and the future Stars of Wrestling Women's Champion. Mentioned she is from Los Angeles. She this was her first ever rating on a PWI list, and she debuted at number 50. I don't know what the song is, but I kind of dig it. She has appeared a couple times in AEW, uh, including challenging Mercedes Martinez for the Ring of Honor women's title, uh, back when Mercedes held that. preparing to go one-on-one -on -one now here with KC Spinelli. Spinelli, as I mentioned, a 13-year pro. Viva Van, only one year, or sorry, only five years as a pro, so significantly less experience for Viva. The winner of this will face Mickey James later on tonight. Here we go. It is number 50 against number 79 for a shot at number 15. Casey Spinelli, Viva Van. And here we go. There's the bell. Right into a Northern Light suplex by Viva Van. It's a kick to the face. Looks like she's going for something off the ropes. Changed her mind. Now going to the top turnbuckle. Went for double axe handle, but Spinelli ran under her. And she swings and misses as a result. Scoop. A big power slam there by Spinelli. Right hand now go behind. Into an electric chair. Face first out of the electric chair. Viva Van takes the ride down, and Spinelli in firm control here early. The veteran instincts definitely giving her an edge. Snapmare takeover now off the ropes. Shotgun drop kick to the face. Gorgeous move there. By Spinelli taking a little too much time. Taunting the crowd, though. That may come back and bite her. Now pulling Van up to her feet, and then just throwing her away, just feels her, I think, even by the hair. Hard to tell from this angle, though. Got her up in a firewoman to carry into a power bomb. Just absolute domination here by Casey Spinelli. Hooks the leg. One. A referee actually saw Casey Spinelli grab the bottom rope, uh, which is more than they have seen throughout these tournaments this season. I've mentioned it a few times, the officiating, very questionable in 2K. 
Dragon screw leg whip by Van to take control back. Now a series of kicks. She's going back to the top. This didn't work out for her last time. Big elbow drop. Shades of Kyrie. That uh, insane elbow. And that's a couple of kicks to the downed opponent from Viva Van. Oh, nice uh, defensive wrestling from both women. They're both blocking attempts from their opponents, but Van gets behind and gets the big German suplex and a big knee to the face. You call that the Vive trigger? Because I think I might. So my apologies. Something is kicking up dust right now, and I am having a little bit of allergy trouble. Looks like one, two. Oh, and that almost did it. Viva Van almost picked up the win. And she wants that shot at Mickey James later tonight. Super kick right on the jaw. And then a twisting shooting star. I don't know what to call that, but it was effective and amazing. And Viva Van picks up the win. Viva Van and Mickey James later tonight. That is going to be fantastic. Hell bent vixen, Eva Van, eating number seventy nine, AC Spinelli for the twisting shooting star press. I'm sure that has a name, uh, but unfortunately, I haven't seen a ton of Eva Van matches yet. I know bad announcer, not doing research, but hey, I've got a day job. I'm going to wrestling class three nights a week. Uh, by the way, check out The Academy, which is our YouTube show. comes out every Sunday afternoon, uh, 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central Time. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I don't have a ton of time to watch much wrestling anymore, which is kind of ironic considering I am about to get paid to write wrestling. Uh, so, um, And also, I should probably know the independent scene. I know a lot about it. Here, I, I don't know why I'm trying to justify this. I'm just self-conscious about it, I think. Speaking of streamers, which nobody was, but I was in my head, Rosemary uh, is an acquaintance of one of the, uh, the people over at Dub3, uh, which if you're not following Andrew Everett's uh, online promotion that he does using Fire Pro, you are really missing out. Uh, Dub three is fantastic, and they always put on really fun shows. Uh, and um, a, a an acquaintance of Rosemary's is uh, is very heavily involved in those shows. And uh, but you just gotta you just gotta check it out. It's so much fun. Uh, it's really kind of what inspired this in a lot of ways. And uh, doing this is kind of what inspired me to get into, uh, get back into actual commentary. So I uh, hadn't really put those pieces together, but Dub 3 kind of uh, changed my life. Here we go. This is our last match before the intermission. We're going to find out who is going to face Ty Mello later on. Out first. One fall. Making way to the ring. The other side of George Ness. The assassin. Rosemary. The demon assassin Rosemary. 15 years of pro after being trained by some of the best trainers in Canada. Johnny Devine, Scott D'Amour, and Tyson Dukes. An absolute monster in the ring, Rosemary. Uh, I do not envy her opponent in this match, who, even though she's the higher seed, Rosemary, they don't call her the death dealer for nothing. Got a, a ton of great trademark moves the Red Wedding, the Mist of Transformation, 
the skyward suplex. And here comes Tootie Lynn. From St. Louis, Missouri, the Dragon. Tootie Lynn, known as the Blue Dragon, trained by Sadie Blaze and uh, Mike Logan. Um, somebody that uh, we're not going to name. Only a year pro, so she's, uh, you know, a third the experience of Rosemary, but she's another one of those rising stars in the Midwest independent scene. She's made a few appearances for AEW on Dark and Dark Elevation. Uh, she, you know, worked with uh, the likes of Trisha Dora, Janai Kai, Shazza McKenzie throughout the independent scene. So definitely want to keep an eye on here, but uh, she's also going to want to keep an eye on Rosemary, who, I mean, let's be honest, doesn't care so much about winning as she does just hurting people. Let's see, she's got Death Dealer written on her stomach. She's got Decay written on her arm, a nod to her former stable. Lynn sends her into the corner, though. Series of kicks. And then slamming her face first off the top turnbuckle. Tootie Lynn in control here early. Again, Ty Mello, you know, is watching this on the monitors backstage. She will face the winner later on tonight. After this match, we'll take a little five-minute intermission. You know, go grab a, I just I finished my water bottle a little bit ago. I'm going to go grab another one. Uh, you know, if you'll need to take a quick bathroom break, go for that. Uh, and then we will come back with our last four matches of the night where we will fill in four more spots in the round of 32. Big right hand by Tootie Lynn, and down goes Rosemary. Working over the arm, and a stomp to the face, and another. It has, I would say, surprisingly been pretty much all Tootie Lynn since the bell here. And a big drop kick sends Rosemary to the floor. Tootie falls. There's a over, big overhead strikes. And then a couple of shots to the midsection. And a standing axe kick. Oh, went for the punch. Blocked by Rosemary. Just got her up in a firewoman's carry. Into a sit-out powerbomb. And just like that, Rosemary turns things around. The demon assassin. The death dealer. Turns to the ring now, playing to the crowd, and they are giving her an earful. Trying to get out to the floor, but the referee holding her back. Not sure what the logic was there, but a nice roll-up. Uh, uh, somersault Cazadora sunset flip by uh, by Tootie Lynn. Surprised she didn't go for a pin off of it. Hooks the leg. One, two. Kick out by Rosemary. Tootie can't believe it. She might have got her if she just stayed in the pin after that sunset flip. Instead, going for a crucifix into a head scissor, into a Fujiwara arm bar. Just cranking back on the left shoulder of Rosemary. Rosemary barely hanging on. Tootie lets her go. That could also be a mistake. Tootie making relatively rookie mistakes, which is unusual for a five-year pro. Dragging Rosemary away from the ropes. Let's for the pin. One, two, three, and that does it. Tootie Lynn is the winner. The number 63 seed. Blue Dragon, Tootie Lynn picks up the win. Rosemary sinks back to the depths. Fair match, not to be a pin after an arm bar. And neither of them involved Ronda Rousey. Another two star encounter there. But we now know it is going to be. Tootie Lynn against Ty Mello. So, 
here in just a second, we're going to take a little five minute intermission. And then when we come back, we will have four more matches to sign our spots in the third round, the round of 32 in this tournament. Uh, when we come back, it is going to be Miyu Watanabe against Alexis Falcon, Tutti Lin, who we just see right there, against Ty Mello, Mickey James against Viva Van. And our main event will pit the number 31 seed Giselle Shaw against number 34, Arisa Nakajima. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in five minutes.
So one thing I failed to make note of uh, before we took our intermission is that by virtue of losing, Rosemary ends the perfect streak that Impact Wrestling has had throughout this tournament thus far. So that's uh, that's got to be a little bit disappointing for Impact, but a great showing from Rosemary just coming up a little short against the higher seed uh, against Tootie Lynn. So, so far we have only had three upsets tonight. Very unusual for how this tournament has gone so far. Um, all three of the uh, the losses, though, have been WWE superstars. Uh, Bianca Belair, Ronda Rousey, and Naomi. Uh, WWE, of course, has gone 0 for 4 on the night. This Blair Davenport also lost. Four, one fall. One fall. Making her way to the ring from London, England. The European Underground. Prestigious champion, Alex S. The Falcon. So Alexis Falcon, the number 111 seed earlier tonight, uh, put on the best match of the night when she upset Ronda Rousey uh, using that Sister Abigail DDT variation. Uh, just a, uh, a brutal finish after a, a pretty brutal match. You know, her arms have got to be bothering her because Ronda... You know, was definitely focusing on those throughout the course of the match. So we will see if Alexis's opponent is going to turn her focus to those injured arms. And from Kobe, Japan, the international women's champion, Mills the Wonder. So Mio Watanabe. It is a. It's a champion versus champion match here though is Falcon come out with the wrestling resurgence art house championship as i mentioned earlier she is also currently the alpha omega wrestling women's champion and the tnt extreme wrestling women's champion and she's in there with this woman right here you can see that belt that is the tokyo joshi pro international princess championship a title she has held since october now we will see who picks up the win here uh, as uh, Miwatanabe upset Naomi earlier. I mentioned one of the four losses for WWE tonight. Not a good showing, but because Rosemary lost that last match against Tootie Lin, WWE still has the most wrestlers remaining in the tournament with 10. Impact slips down to nine Rosemary's loss after having gone undefeated uh, thus far throughout the tournament. We're four and oh up to that point. A series of punches to the face by Falcon. And now she's just dancing a little jig. She's doing a dance. And then just chopping Miyu Watanabe across the face. And then a, just a spinning face buster. And now raining more punches down. I don't know what happened to Alexis Falcon backstage. One, two. But she has come into this match with Miyu Watanabe, a house of fire. Or is it a house of fire? Like a, a house that is a flame. I'm not sure. It's probably supposed to be a house of fire, right? It's just always pronounced like of fire. Well, no, I'm just confusing myself. Anyway, the winner of this match is going to face, uh, is going to move on to episode 12, where we will have uh, third round matches. Uh, she will, uh, third and fourth round matches, actually. The winner of this match will face the winner between Mickey James and Viva Van. Uh, that match is coming up later tonight. Uh, folks, we have three more matches after this one. We're filling in four more spots in the round of 32. Nice tiger suplex there by Watanabe. Only gets one, though. Uh, so thus far, Layla Gray, JC Jane, Natalia, Jamie Hayter, Dana Brooke, Miranda Alizé, Charlotte Flair, uh, Savannah Evans, Serena Deeb, Shoko Nakajima, Jessica Troy, Utami Hayashishida, Becca, Maki Ito, Raquel Rodriguez, and Miyu Yamashita 
have all clinched spots in the round of 32. So that is 16. That's half of the field of 32. Uh, and over the course of this episode and the three that follow, uh, we will fill in the rest of those spots. One, two, three. And once again, Miyu Watanabe picks up the win. Yeah. Pinfall. So Miyu Watanabe, the number 82, speaking of the round of 32. And so far, as we mentioned, you know, a lot of upsets throughout this tournament, a lot of top seeds gone. But conversely, only Becca among the 16 women that have qualified, or 17 women that have qualified at this point, um, had to win a qualifying match. So far, all of the qualifiers, including Alexis Falcon just now, except for Becca, lost in either the first or second round and will not be competing in the round of 32. So we will see Miyu Watanabe, what, uh, sorry, Miyu Watanabe again on episode 12 of this show. She has clinched a spot in the round of 32. Uh, and 2K has crashed. <sighs> so that happens. I think that's the third or fourth time that's happened this season. 2K22, just the 2K games always crash. Not always. It's only happened three or four times a season, but I don't think I've ever had Fire Pro crash on me. I've had it kind of stall where I had to like exit out and relaunch it. That's happened maybe three times in the like three years I've had it. Um, but 2K does it a lot, or it'll lose connection to the servers, or you know, whatever. Uh, so anyway, so that match uh, that I was talking about uh, with Mia Watanabe, that is tentatively scheduled to happen on March 21st, three weeks from tonight. All right, so I've got 2K back. There we go, as we're listening to uh, Elias's entrance. All right, so three matches to go. It couldn't last three matches without crashing. I mean, it lasted nine. I I should lighten up. But I do like to make fun of it, just because it only happens on this game. I can be playing, you know, the most complex games. You know, Last of Us, Horizon, Deathloop. I think all of these, you know, AAA, God of War, all these AAA games. None of them crash. But WWE 2K22. By the way, did you guys watch the up, up, down, down stream where they were going through uh, the uh, the wrestler ratings for 23? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, they had Xavier Woods host it with uh, Biggie, Tyler Breeze, um, Bailey, and uh, Dakota Kai. Just it was a very fun show. Uh, and the guy that does uh, uh, This Is Awesome on Peacock, whose name escapes me at the moment. I apologize. Um, but <laughs> so they've turned it into kind of a game show where they were it was like kind of prices writing the the ratings of one fall. Making her way to the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Day May So Ty Mello making her way to the ring after... Uh, Picking up a victory earlier, the biggest upset of the tournament thus far when she beat Bianca Belair to qualify for the second round here. Uh, she's hoping to be the second qualifier to make it all the way to round three. Um, but like I was saying, definitely check out that stream on Up, Up, Down, Down because uh, throughout the course of the show, it became pretty clear that they agreed with almost none of the ratings uh, they were, you know, clearly, you know, they were being diplomatic, uh, like you do. Um, but uh, the the number of times something to the effect of, oh, I thought it would have been higher, or oh, uh, that seems high, um, was uh, 
kind of astounding <laughs> how often they said that, some version of that. And uh, so I'm hoping 23 doesn't have the crashing problems that 22 has had, um, as we just saw it happen. Uh, there's the blue dragon, Tootie Lynn, who we saw just before the break beating Rosemary, ending Impact Wrestling's streak of four straight victories. This tournament has been very kind to the independents, by the way. I mentioned uh, uh, that WWE has 10 wrestlers remaining, uh, which is the most among all promotions. There are 17 independent women remaining. I mean, they're all, or I guess 16 now that Alexis Falcon was. And they're all, you know, strong independent women who don't need no man. And, but uh, <laughs> we've seen have done very well throughout this tournament. And there's the bell, and we are underway with our second second round match of the night. Tootie Lynn and Ty Mello. The winner will face either Giselle Shaw or Arisa Nakajima uh, in three weeks. So the upcoming schedule, this Tuesday we will continue. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Tuesday. Uh, so this Sunday, uh, March 5th, we continue one afternoon stream instead of an evening stream uh, because Russian is next Sunday, March 5th. And uh, I don't know about you folks, but I want to watch that. So I'm gonna. Uh, so we're going to do a, a mid-afternoon stream. So we're done by the time that show kicks off, hopefully, because there's two tag matches. But they are going to be 2K tag matches as opposed to the Fire Pro ones. Uh, the card for that one we will have... Uh, what do I have? 11 second round matches. Oh, quick pin here from Tootie. Two. Two count off that frog splash. Uh, Tootie, not sure what she's doing now. Oh, just raining down punches on Ty. That's uh, that's not great. Um, So uh, we're going to have 11 second round matches and then three third round matches. Uh, just because the way the bracket works out, there are going to be a lot of these uh, winning teams that will be facing either uh, once they win and move on to the next round, a uh, team that is made up of women or that's mixed, uh, and 2K doesn't allow that, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we're going to have to push those matches till later uh, to do them in Fire Pro, because I don't want to be switching the input back and forth between uh, 2K on my PS5 and Fire Pro on my PS4. <laughs> Um, I'm probably going to wind up having to just redo all of my stuff in Fire Pro on my PS5 uh, and just going through that way. Uh, Tootie again with that rolling uh, sunset flip. Very nicely done, but taking a lot of time pulling Ty away from the ropes. One, two, three. Well, it took a long time, but not too long. Tootie Lynn picks up the win and is now moving on to the round of 32. Blue Dragon Tootie Lynn, the number 63 seed, moving on. We will see her again in three weeks in the third round of the 150. We started with 150 women. Once this show is over, we will be down to 68. Uh, so we have passed the halfway mark of the tournament. Uh, I should have made a mention of that, uh, except I just kind of forgot. <laughs> when Arisa Nakajima beat Laney Luck earlier, that was the midpoint of the tournament. That was the point where uh, 75 uh, women had been eliminated out of the initial 150. So we have two more matches to go tonight. We're going to find out who's going to be facing Miyu Watanabe uh, in three weeks. We will also find out who's going to be facing Tootie Lin in three weeks. But first, we're going to find out Watanabe's opponent as the number 50 seed in our tournament, Viva Van, takes on the Impact Knockouts champion and the number 15 overall seed, Oh, Mickey James. So, so far uh, through the 18 women that have qualified for the round of 32, only four of them are among the top 32 seeds. Uh, Mickey hoping, of course, to be the fifth. 
uh, among that list. Uh, and then Giselle Shaw in our main event, hoping to be the sixth. Uh, so that would be two more big wins for Impact. Uh, you know, they they lost Rosemary earlier, but Nikki and Giselle can both clinch spots in the round of 32. Uh, let's see, I'm just doing a quick scan. I genuinely can't remember if anybody from Impact... Yeah, Savannah Evans uh, has already advanced to the round of 32. The following contest is scheduled for one, one fall. Making her way to the ring from the United States of America, L. So we saw the Hellbent Vixen Viva Van beat Casey Spinelli earlier tonight with a twisting shooting star press. Spectacular move. Uh, so we will see if her impressive offense can be enough to overcome one of the all-time greats in this industry. Again, like I said, Viva Van beating Casey Spinelli. Spinelli a legend on the independent circuit. But there are very few women if any, in the history of women's wrestling, at least in the last 20 years of it, who have made as much of an impact as Viva's opponent in this match, Mickey James. And that was also not a, an intended pun, impact. I didn't mean it to be a pun, but she is the current reigning, not defending. No titles are on the line in this tournament until we get to the finals when we, uh, when we crown the first ever World Simulades champion. You saw the uh, fan holding up the Mickey James poster there in like the second or third row. Oh, there's another one. Actually, the same poster. Did they just pass it back? Or did two people make the same artwork of Mickey? That would be pretty impressive if they did. Oh, you know what? I didn't make any note after that last match. Oh, that's annoying. I will have to go back and look part of the replay to fill in. <sighs> I hate doing that. Just got so excited for the last couple matches. I didn't. Uh, I didn't jot down the uh, the rating for that last match. Here comes Mickey James, the Impact Knockouts Champion. that rolling sunset bomb, but I did not catch rating. Or at least I didn't put it in my spreadsheet. Mickey James, of course, beat Kylie Ray in our opener tonight. It was a squash. It only got one star because it was over so fast. Let's see if she can run through Viva Van the same way to earn her spot in the round of 32. Mickey James, the queen of hardcore country. Ready for a big match here. Viva Van, Mickey James, number 50, number 15. There's the bell, and here we go with our semi main event. Mickey with the arm drag takeover. And then elbow drops the shoulder. I'm sorry, leg drops the shoulder. And then it's a standing neck breaker. Heading up to the top rope. Already is Mickey James. What's she going for here? High cross body hooks the leg. One. One can only referee out of position. I don't think she would have had her for three anyway. But again, questionable officiating throughout this tournament, uh, including just there. Where the referee just kind of standing back, watching the match, forgetting to like be involved and be in position when somebody goes for a pin. Mickey just raining punches and stomps down on Viva Van now. Went for the kick, but Viva blocked it. And then a forearm to the back and another. And down goes Mickey. Viva hooks the leg. One. One count only. We've been trading one counts here in the early going. Goes into the cross arm breaker. We have had, I believe, three matches tonight end via pinfall after one of these. Oh, Mickey rolls through it. And it goes right back to raining down punches on Viva Van. And a big clothesline. And another. And that back heel kick catches Viva Van right on the jaw. Oh, she went for the chick kick. Viva ducked it and fires off a clothesline. Kick 
to the midsection off the ropes. Axe kick. Shades of the legendary Booker T. Dragging Mickey away from the ropes, taking a very long time to do it, though. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. It is enough. And we have yet another upset. So far, we were uh, two for two in the uh, second round show. Hell bent Vixen Viva Van, the number 50 seed, knocking off number 15, Mickey James. We now know that Viva Van will, will be facing uh, uh, Watanabe in round three. That match is going to happen in three weeks right here on Pro Two. Now, stars for that to Viva Van and Mickey James. Latest top 32 seed to fall the latest top 15 seed to fall so many very very high seeds have been eliminated throughout this tournament including earlier tonight number two bianca belair lost to ty Mello. this tournament man when anything can happen when you're simulating wrestling in a video game and we are going to see that one more time here tonight. But it's time for our main event. The winner will face Tootie Lynn in three weeks in the round of 32. Here we go. It is Arisa Nakajima and Giselle Shaw. The number 31 and 34 seeds. Arisa is number 34. Giselle number 31. Again, my apologies that Arisa Nakajima is my edit. And I am terrible at create a wrestler. So, um, again, my apologies to Arisa and any of her fans. I couldn't find a community creation, and I am bad at creating wrestlers in games. Uh, as I've mentioned many, many, many times uh, on this channel, and likely will many, many, many more times as we go on, because uh, I have had to create more for future episodes. So you've got that to look forward to. Nakajima is going to be out first here. The last remaining wrestler from Seedling. Uh, Seedling had gone 0-2 coming into this show, uh, but she gave them their, it, their only win thus far. One fall. It's from Chichibu in Saitama, Japan. Five foot three, 132 pounds, the reigning seedling beyond the sea champion. We saw her earlier tonight beat Laney Luck with her DD finish. It's a half Nelson suplex hold. Big win for Arisa Nakajima in that match. Hoping to keep that momentum going. Number 34 seed as she takes on number 31 in, uh, I believe this is our first chalk quote-unquote main event of the tournament thus far where the two oh uh, no i take it back utami hai shishida and jetta in episode five was also chalk uh oh as was shuri and jamie hater in uh episode three and Star okay you know what i don't know what i'm talking about we have only had one episode so far where we didn't have a chalk main event nope every episode has had one it just hasn't been the one we thought it was going to be where it's the two closest scenes that's where i got confused um because for example in episode three the main event was shuri and jamie hater right giselle shaw doesn't have an entrance name Making her way to the ring now. Uh, episode three, the main event should have been Princess of Sushi against uh, Hyan. Uh, they both lost in the first round. Um, ditto for uh, episode four, where it should have been, I think, Alex Windsor and Suzu Suzuki. No, it should have been Tony Storm and Miranda Alize. Um, But again, both women lost. So. But anyway, I'm sorry, not Miranda Elise. Uh, 
you know what? I'm just talking myself in circles here. I'm going to focus on this match, our main event. Of Giselle Shaw just came to the ring. The Quintus Diva, five foot seven hundred and thirty pounds. They are about the same weight, but Shaw is four inches taller. But Nakajima taking the early advantage here. Now going into oh, just a hanging dragon sleeper, trying to choke out Giselle Shaw again. The referee just kind of letting it happen because why not? Nakajima hooks the leg. One, two. Oh wow! Very nearly got the win right away. Giselle kicks out, charges in, float over DDT. Rolls her over, hooks the leg. One, no, not even a one count. A recent Nakajima kicked out before one. A big right hand from Shaw takes Nakajima back down. And now, snapmare suplex. Sort of a cravat suplex there by Giselle Shaw. She is the number 31 seed. She, whoever wins this match will be the highest seed to come out of this episode. 31 and 34 uh, are Shaw and Nakajima, respectively. Uh, the two highest seeds in this episode have all fallen by the wayside. Actually, the top three highest seeds in this episode have all fallen. Bianca Belair, Mickey James, and Ronda Rousey have all lost tonight. And Nakajima pulls Shaw out of the corner with a variation on a power bomb. And now she takes a second to soak in the adulation of the crowd. Now heading up to the top rope. What's she going for here? Big leg drop. Guillotine leg drop. Uh, hooks the leg. One, two. Two count only, says the referee. Nakajima to go behind. Oh, she was going for the DD, but uh, Shaw rolls out of it into another float over DDT. Boy, Nakajima to her feet. C4 right on the logo. Gorgeous move by Giselle Shaw. One. Two and kicked out Nakajima barely hanging in there. Oh, Shaw looked like she was going for the chip kick, but Nakajima sidestepped it. Oh, and there's that fall away slam into the pinball. That's the cutie special, and that does it. Arisa Nakajima, the number 34 seed, is moving on. No one from the top 32 seeds survives this episode. Arisa Nakajima has defeated Giselle Shaw with the cutie special. That edit is not cutie. I apologize. Again, I'm bad at editing. A three-star main event there for Arisa Nakajima as she upsets Giselle Shaw to move on to a third round showdown with 2D Lynn. So congratulations. Give me one second here and I'll get myself on the screen too. Just so you're not just staring at a static image. Yeah, let's make me a little bigger. Oh, I don't need to be that big. There we go. Uh, that's fine. Oh, maybe I can do this. Nope. All right, we're learning as we go, folks. Uh, um, congratulations to Miyu Watanabe, Tudi Lin, Viva Van, and Arisa Nakajima, all advancing to the third round. That brings the total of third rounders up to 20, uh, and we are going to get another four coming up. Uh, that will be the next episode of the 150 will be next Tuesday, uh, most likely in our usual time slot of 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, um, had a time uh, commitment you know, uh, a scheduling conflict that uh, prevented me from being able to do the show then. So why I got pushed back an hour. Thank you for uh, joining me anyway. Um, but this Sunday, the 150 rolls on. Or, so, yes, the 100, our tag team tournament rolls on with second and third round matches. So as I mentioned, um, because of the way 2K handles intergender matches, had to rearrange the schedule a lot. 
usually I try to do like chunk of bracket by chunk of bracket. And when I do the shows where there's two rounds, like we did tonight, I try to get so that's all of one section. So eight winners face eight winners, you know, four winners walk away, right? Um, that's not how it's going to be for the next few episodes of the 100. The 150 is going to stay the same. The 100 is what's going to change. So I'm going to try to do this as simply as I can, uh, but I apologize in advance because it will probably get a little complex. Actually, you know what? I don't even need uh, Arisa on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and close out of, of 2K. Uh, okay, so on the next episode, we will see Meltier against Bougie Reality. Uh, we will see... Actually, you know, I'm going to do this in pairs. That's going to be easier to describe. We will see the Usos against Waves and Curls. And we will see the New Day against the Blondes. The winners of those two matches will face off in a third round match later on in that show. Uh, so far, so simple. Yeah. Uh, we will also see the Street Profits against the Creed Brothers and the Acclaimed against the 0121. The winners of those matches will face each other later on in that episode. Of course, this is all happening Sunday night right here at Pro Wrestling Simulated. Uh, we will also see United Empire take on the Iron Savages and the Kingdom against the Velocities. The winners of those matches will face off on in that show. Those will be the three third round matches on that show. There will be five additional second round matches in addition to the six I've already named uh, because of the way the brackets work out. Depending on who wins, there may be an intergender match in the next round, which again, 2K does not allow. So I'm pushing it back to a Fire Pro episode later on. Uh, so we will see additionally to those matches I just mentioned, Meltier, against Bougie Reality, Sunshine Machine against Atropa Sueños, La Rebellion against MSP, the Brothers against the Philip Brothers, and the Young Bucks against the Workhorsemen. So there will be 11 second round matches and three third round matches all happening this Sunday in the 100. On the next episode of the 150, which will be a week from tonight, Tuesday, March 7th. We will see the number seven seed, Saya Kamatani, take on Savers, Taya Valkyrie against Dakota Kai, Camille against Rachel Rowe, uh, Camille is a friend of mine, her own match. Oh, am I back? Yeah. Uh, I think it would be cool if she called her own match. Uh, I'm going to ask her about it. Uh, this week and see if I can get her on next Tuesday. Uh, Mercedes Monet will take on Anna J. Momo Watanabe against Marty Bell. Rhea Ripley against Saori Anu. Natsupoi against Jordan Blade. And Holly Dead will take on Hikari Noah. And then the winners of those eight matches will face off in four second round matches, much like we've seen for the last few weeks here on the 150. The 150 remains unchanged in terms of it still being eight first round matches followed by four second round matches. It's only the tag team tournament, the 100, uh, that is being affected by uh, having the toggle between two different games. Um, hopefully that will sort itself out in the coming weeks uh, leading into WrestleMania, which is going to happen WrestleMania weekend. Uh, I don't have an exact date and time for that. It's probably going to be in the afternoon on Sunday. Um, but okay, it's really going to depend on when FXE has its first show. Uh, if it winds up being Saturday, April 1st, uh, which I think we probably won't because I don't think we want our first show to compete against WrestleMania. Uh, um, but you know, it's wrestling, anything can happen. So, uh, join us this Sunday here on, on the channel for the start of rounds two and three in the 100 and then rounds one and two of the 150 roll on next Tuesday here on twitch.tv slash pro wrestling simulated pro wrestling simulated on Facebook PWS online on YouTube. Uh, of course, you know, you can follow us on all the social medias. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're streaming 
twice uh, coming up. There will be a couple of uh, Saturday streams and actually a Thursday coming up as well, uh, just to try to get all of this done by the time of WrestleMania weekend. Um, because I, like I said, I want this tournament to end WrestleMania weekend. That just seems like an appropriate time for the, the biggest simulated tag team tournament and the biggest simulated women's tournament of all time to conclude that weekend. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I will be back Sunday night. Now and then, watch some wrestling. Cultaholic put out a great list of the 101 best matches, or 101 WWE matches you need to see, and uh, it's great. Uh, there's a, a ton of classics on there, some underrated classics, uh, plus some of my all-time favorites. Uh, lots of Shawn Michaels, lots of Undertaker, lots of Steve Austin, as you can imagine, but they also go back and there's some some uh, Patterson and Sergeant Slaughter and Bob Backlund and Jimmy Snuka, and, you know, some, some old school stuff to go with the uh, slightly more contemporary, uh, you know, some John Cena, there's some, you know, AJ Styles. Uh, good matches on that. If, if you haven't seen any of those matches, go on talk. Or if you're abroad, go to uh, the WWE Network. Almost all of, I'm pretty sure all of those matches are available, actually, on streaming. So do that. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, I will see you Sunday here on Pro Wrestling Simulated. Till then, I'm yours truly, Pat.